Now there's another way to compute determinants in 3D that's going to wind up being very helpful to us. Let's take a look at something that is called minor expansion. The idea behind minor expansion is this. Let's say we've got our 3x3 three three matrix, then I'm going to expand the determinant about the top row. Now watch how this works. I can express the determinant of A using the following formula. I'm going to take A11, the first element of the first row, and multiply it by the determinant of what is called the 1-1 one, one minor. That is, you delete the first row, delete the first column, look at the 2-by-2 two two block that's left over. A22, A23, A32, A33. These submatrices are called minors. Then what I have to do is subtract A12, the second entry in the first row, times the minor obtained by deleting the first row and the second column. And I take the determinant of that 2x2 two two minor. Then I add A13 times the determinant of the 1-3 uh, minor, that is delete the first row and the third column. Now, I like to think of this graphically. You, you take A11, delete the row and column, take the determinant of what's left over. Subtract off A12, delete the first row, second column, take the determinant of what's left over, add A13, delete the row and column, take the determinant of what's left over. This is an example of minor expansion about the first row. But we're just getting started because you can do a lot more than that. In general, minors are defined via row and column deletion. The ijth minor of a matrix is what you get by deleting the ith row, the jth column from A, and then uh, sort of smushing everything else together to, to, to get a square matrix of one dimension lower. And in general, the determinant of A is an alternating sum of weighted minors. You have to keep track of the pluses and minuses here. When expanding about that first row, we get A11 times the determinant of M11 minus A12 times the determinant of the associated minor plus A13. But you could expand about the last row, the third row in this case, in which case you would get a, a, a different looking formula that returns the exact same formula for the determinant of A. Now you can use columns as well, any column you like, as long as you pay attention to the alternating signs, to the plus and minus uh, in the structure of the matrix. You've got to remember how those pluses and minuses are organized, and then, then you can compute the determinant using any row or any column and doing minor expansion. And it doesn't matter which row or column you expand about. Well, in theory, it doesn't matter. In practice, let's see what happens in the following example of a 3x3 three three determinant. Let's say a is 11, 8, 3, 0, 2, 0, negative 1, 15, 0. Let's see what happens when we expand about the first row using A11 and A12 and A13 as we've done before. This gives us 11 times the determinant of 2, 0, 15, 0, minus 8 times the determinant of 0, 0, negative 1, 0, plus 3 times the determinant of 0, 2, negative 1, 15, and those computations are really easy. We get an answer of 6. That's great. Wonderful. Fine. However, let's be strategic about which row or column about which we expand. If we choose, in this case, the last column, that has a lot of zeros in it. Then we can do a minor expansion where most of the terms just automatically vanish. The determinant is 3 times the minor determinant 0, 2, negative 1, 15, minus 0 times some something, plus 0 times some something, we get the same answer, but it was much easier because of all those zeros. So in general, you want to choose the row or the column that has a lot of zeros or really simple terms in order to make a determinant computation much easier.